What's up YouTube, Justin Fuller here, and today I'm outside of a 2021 Honda HRV LX. So this is your entry level model. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, it's a 2021, should I wait for the 2022? Possibly, and we're gonna go over some of those reasons and what this car has to offer. So let's hop on in. All right guys, so here we are at the front end of this car and I wanna talk about what's underneath the hood. So currently you've got a 1.8 liter four cylinder engine in this vehicle. So it's the 1.8 liter that you would have found in the previous generation Civic. Now, as we move into 22, it's speculated that you'll probably see the two liter engine land in this. And in the higher trims, possibly that 1.5 liter that you currently see in the Honda Civic. So let's talk about what's underneath the hood. So I've got my brake distribution right here. Over here, you can see I have my oil intake and you can see that it's quickly labeled zero W20 in case you need to fill up. My dipstick is nice and, 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 and noticeable right here. I've got windshield wiper fluids as I come across my radiator intake. Uh, and then of course, easy access to my battery terminals, my positive and my negative. I've got my CPU, uh, I've got an air box, and then I've got a fuse box sitting right here. So everything is easily accessible inside of this vehicle. All right guys, so before we leave the front end of this vehicle, I wanna talk about a horsepower comparison. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw up some of the competitors on the screen so you can see what compares to this vehicle. So the Honda HRV gets a 141 horsepower out of that 1.8 liter engine. So this way you could take a look and kind of understand, hey, in, in comparison to the rest of the cars in the market, is it underpowered, is it overpowered, is it right where it should live? So take a look at that. Now that you've looked at that, let's talk about miles per gallon. So this car gets 28 in the city and 34 on the highway. So you're getting a combined of 30 miles per gallon. Fantastic as far as a commuter vehicle or anything that you may need to travel in regularly to throw stuff in the trunk, things of that nature. So I wanna throw another comparison up on the screen so that you can see how this car compares to those other vehicles out there in the market as far as MPGs. So take a look at that and we'll move on to the next topic. All right guys, so let's take a quick walk around of this vehicle and talk about some of the exterior features that you can see and what you would get by jumping up to that sport trim level. All right, so the first thing I wanna point out is up on the front end of the vehicle, you'll notice that you've got this nice chrome brow uh, followed up with a lighting system, the LED headlights, and then your halogen ha beams. And you'll notice you do not have fog lights on this vehicle. That is gonna be something you would get if you climbed up to that sport trim level. Now, as we continue to move around, I'll point out that it does have a 17 inch alloy wheel on it. Uh, if you wanted to climb up to that sport model, you would have an 18 inch alloy wheel. And then along down the sides here, you can see I have a nice plastic piece, but you would have the uh, underbody spoiler kit if you're moving to the sport too. So just wanna remind you of, hey, what am I getting if I go up to that? And I'll throw this a uh, whole list up as we go around. So you've got body colored as far as your mirrors and your door handles on this vehicle. So they are gonna blend in with the car. And then the back handles you'll notice are a little bit higher up. Uh, so they're gonna be right here. Now, the only thing I'll point about this is if you do have small children that typically can get in and out of the car on their own, this does sit a little bit higher. So it may be harder for them to get a hold of to open up that door. So just be aware of it. Now, as we move around to the back of the vehicle, uh, of course, I will point out that this vehicle has been tinted uh, here at this dealership, so just notice that, but you do have the uh, small spoiler with the brake light in it. You've got the windshield wipers on the back. Of course, the car is badged HRV. I've got a nice chrome tip, and then, of course, the badging for Honda, uh, and then underneath, I've got this single exhaust. Now, as we move around the side uh, to the other side, I will point out that this car does not have roof rails on it. If you climbed up to that sport model, you could additionally get those as well. So just some things to be aware of uh, as you're looking at the exterior of this vehicle. Now. I wanna take a quick second now that we've kind of talked about what's on the exterior of this car and I've mentioned the Sport and I'm just gonna throw you up a list of items that you can see that live on that Sport model. Now, the difference is about two grand so that you have a general understanding for, hey, if I wanted to climb up so that I could get things like Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, I could get a seven inch display screen, I could get a, you know, a leather wrapped steering wheel. Maybe I want to have those Sport pedals and the paddle shifters in the vehicle and maybe I like the idea of a little bit bigger wheel and those roof rails on the vehicle. Well, then the Sport model would be an excellent, you know, vehicle to look at and I, I actually have already shot a video on that that I'll throw up on the screen so you can click on that link if you want to check that vehicle out.
Now, before we head into the interior of this vehicle, I want to talk to you about the 2022 model. It is expected that we will see a body style change, so I have a feeling we're going to see changes to the front, potentially the engine. In Europe, we already know that they are going to be getting a hybrid version, which would be awesome to see here in the US, but I have a feeling that we're probably going to see that 2 liter aspirated engine and possibly the 1.5 liter turboed engine. Now, the remainder of the exterior of the car is going to look fairly familiar, but I'll throw up a couple images of what we've seen renderings of the 2022 so that you can get an idea for it. All right, guys, so here we are at the back end of this vehicle. So let's come on in and talk to you about a couple of different things. The first thing I'll point out is that your tailgate is not powered, nor will you find a powered tailgate on any of the trim levels of this vehicle. So just be aware of that in case you're looking. Now, I would point out that your backup camera is gonna be located right here, but let's go ahead and open this sucker up. Now, once you've opened it up, You've got a good amount of cargo space to actually work with inside of this vehicle. But first, let's get these carpeted floor mats out of the way. I will remind you that all of these vehicles come with carpeted floor mats, whereas some of the other trims, sometimes you'll find that base models don't always come with that standard. Now, now that we're in the back of this vehicle, let's talk about your cargo space here. So you've got a good amount that you're working with here. Now, you see that you do have tie downs in the back of the vehicle right here and here. And then I've got setups here in case I want to set up a car seat in the back of this vehicle. Now, as far as throwing the back seats down, I've got clips right here that I can pull and then push it down and you've got quite a bit of space here working inside of this car so as you can see that even if i needed to go camping i could potentially sleep in this car and if you didn't think so we'll check this out is this the most flattering shot probably not but it'll prove my point that could i lay down as a six footer in the back of this car absolutely i could so you can see that if i lay diagonal i can fit entirely inside of this vehicle so Maybe I wouldn't want to camp with this with two people. We might have to cuddle really tight, but know that you have quite a bit of space in this vehicle. Whether you're using this for cargo space or you're using this for camping, take advantage. So before we leave the back, I do want to pull this up and just show you that your jack, your accessories, and your spare all live in the back of this car. So one, it does have a spare. Be aware of that. It's full diameter, meaning it's full height, just not full width. So it's not like your typical donut where it might be a little bit smaller. All right, guys, so before we leave the back into this vehicle, I want to do two comparisons for you. The first one I throw up is just if I have the seats up, what kind of cargo space does this have compared to other vehicles out there on the market? Now, after we've looked at that comparison on the screen, I want to do a secondary one. So this is after I fold those seats down and talk about cargo space. Let's look at a comparison of this vehicle compared to other vehicles out there on the market. So after you've taken a look at that, now we're going to move to the second row and check out some cool things there. All right, guys, so here I am in the second row of this vehicle. And the first thing I want to point out is that I've actually got a good amount of leg space here. So I've got this pushed almost all the way back because uh, I was driving it earlier and I've still got room for myself to sit in the back here. So it's really nice to know that you have enough space for adults to sit in the back seat of a small compact SUV like this. Now, while we're back here, I want to do a comparison of not only this vehicle, but some other vehicles out there on the market. So I'm going to throw that up on the screen as far as leg space in your second row so that you can see that and really understand, hey, how does this car compete against those other other vehicles in the market. Now, after we've looked at that, now I'm going to show you what the second row does that you probably won't see in any other vehicle out there on the market. All right, so the first thing I want to show you about the second row is that this second row actually folds up. So I can fold this entire second row up and load a bicycle or something in this. I could throw a TV, I could throw potted plants. It gives me a lot of additional space knowing that not only can I throw the seats down, but additionally, I can throw these seats up as well. So one thing that you're going to find that not a lot of other vehicles do there on the market. Now, if you can see across, I'm going to show you another trick that this car does that not a lot of vehicles do. So let's take a look. Oh, uh, you know, life is hard and sometimes you just need a break. Well, what if your car could offer you that? Well, check out what I've got on here. This is what's called lounger mode in this vehicle, to where I can push the front seat down and actually connect it to this back seat, and the seat reclines a little bit so that I can lay out here and relax. So if I'm out at a kid's baseball game or something like that, and I just want to chill in the car and read a book, how nice is it that I could stretch my legs out, enjoy the AC, have some music going, and do whatever I like? I dare you to show me another vehicle that does that on the market. So let's show you how I did that. So the first thing you're going to want to do is slide this front seat all the way forward, grabbing the bar up here and sliding it up. The secondary thing is you're going to want to do this down to relax this back a little bit because what you're going to need to do is take off this headrest. Now, not hard to do, but let me show you where that's at. On the headrest connection here, you'll notice there's a little deal you can pinch right here. And this is gonna allow you to slide it up. However, if you have the seat all the way up, you're actually gonna hit the ceiling of the vehicle. So you're gonna need to relax this back a little bit to take that out. Now, once you've taken that out, you're gonna do kind of two things here. The first thing I wanna show you is that, let me get this out of the way, is that you just have to pull your seat up for it to unlock. And then if you want it to stay up, you just lock it in place. Now, the trick to this is getting this piece down and this at the same time. If not, no big deal. You could always throw this down, come around to here and then throw this piece down and just have a little bit of a lip if you wanted 
Most people like it because it throws some nice pressure up under your legs, but if you want it 100% flush, you're just gonna have to do a little bit of timing to push them both down at the same time. Once you've done that, you now have the lounger chair available to you that you can take advantage of. All right, guys, so before we hop into the front driver's side seat, I just wanna talk to you about the front in general, and I really wanna talk about a leg comparison. So as I'm sitting up here, you can see that with the seat pushed back, I've got quite a bit of space as a six-footer, and then of course, I've got tons of air vents up here to take care of me as far as keeping me cooled off. But I want to compare this vehicle to others out there in the market as far as leg space comparison in the front row. So I'm going to throw up a comparison on the screen so that you can see and compare how does this vehicle look at in the market compared to those other vehicles. How many times did I just say compare? Like 38? I don't know. But now you have a general understanding for that, right? So check out that comparison, 39, and we'll talk about the dash layout. All right, guys. So as we come across the dash, I just want to point out and explain a few buttons and features in the vehicle so that you'll have a better understanding of what you'd be buying or what you currently own. So first down here, I just want to point out that you have access to popping your hood and popping your gas cap. So be aware that those are there for quick releases. Now, when you come up, I have vehicle stability assist. Now, this works with your traction control. So in the event that you go into skid, it'll transfer power to whichever wheel is getting better traction. So just know that that's what that is. And that's always on unless you press it to turn it off. Next to it is going to be your tire pressure monitoring system reset button. So that's what it's going to be. So in the event that you, uh, one of your tires is over or underinflated, it will throw an alert up here that looks exactly like that in the dash. However, it's not going to tell you what the tire pressure actually is to the vehicle. It's just going to let you know that it's over or underfilled. So know that. Now, as a tip and trick, I will remind you that if you go from weather where it's super cold at night and then in the morning it heats way up, sometimes that will set this off. So just be aware of that. I used to regularly see that coming to the service department. Uh, so notate that to yourself if you're buying this car. Be aware that you may potentially run into that. Now, above that is the econ button. Now, when I press that button, you're going to see a green leaf up here. Up here. Now, I'm making it flash at you right now. Now, what this button does is it improves gas mileage of the car. So to remind you on the gas mileage, you have 28 in the city and 34 on the highway. So combined, you're looking at 30. Now, this will help improve beyond that when you engage but you're going to give up some things when you engage this button. One, it's going to affect your AC, so it's not going to blow quite as hard. And two, down there in your accelerator, if you crush it to the floorboard, you're not going to take off and go quite as fast. So while you've got 141 horsepower, know that you're going to be giving up a little bit of that power if you want to use this button. Now, I will say for the average you know, driver, you could probably turn this on, leave it on, and never know the difference and get that better gas mileage. But if you're a little bit more pedal to metal, maybe you turn it on and off as you go. No big deal. You can do that anytime. All right, guys, so let's talk about the steering wheel controls. So I'm going to start you on the left side, and we'll kind of move over to the right side. So over here, the first thing I want to point out is that you have your source button. So this is going to allow you to change audio. So whether it be USB, Bluetooth, the radio, CD player, which probably the last vehicle that you're going to find that actually has a CD player. I don't know that any other Honda offers that anymore, so just be aware of that. Now, your volume controls are right here, the plus and minus. You know, switching between your favorite stations, jumping to the next track. So just depending on what kind of source you're using, these two buttons are going to play a role for you. Now, down below that, you have three triggers. And what I mean by that is that you pull them towards yourself. So to answer a call, to hang up a call or go back in a screen, and use your voice command button. So I love the placement of these, and I love that they're behind the steering wheel. One, it takes away some of the clutter that you sometimes see in new vehicles. And two, I just like that they're kind of hidden away here to where you can easily pull them. So it's just a natural move, you know, for your hands. Now, now, over on the other side is going to be your classic cruise control settings. So I would press cruise to get it ready. And when you press it, you'll see a green light here that says cruise main on it. That's just letting you know now it's on. It's not armed yet, though, right? I would have to press the set button to set the speed. Uh, and then, of course, I can use the plus or resume or the minus to lower or raise the speed and cancel to jump completely out of that. Now, if you were in the sport model, I will point out that you would have paddle shifters up here to allow you to upshift and downshift. Although I will remind you that this vehicle does have a CVT transmission. It just allows you a little bit more control over that. So if you're looking for a little bit more control over the engine uh, to kind of give you that additional power, maybe the sport model is something you want to consider. Now, over here, I will point out that your lighting controls are right here. Simple setup on and off. So no auto on off headlights will you find in this vehicle. And then on the other side, you pull down for the front windshield wipers and then your back are controlled off the tip of the stock right here. Now, everything is going to be an analog display up here. What I'm hoping is that we'll see, much like the Honda Civic, I'm hoping that in the 2022, maybe we'll start to see a digital layout here. Because not only will I prefer uh, a digital layout just in general, but a digital layout for your speed too, so it'll tell you exactly how fast you're going. But to just explain these gauges, of course, I've got my RPMs over here and then what gear I'm in. So as I shift gears, of course, it'll, you know, it'll show me. And then I've got my analog display to tell me what my speed is. And then over here, I'll explain a couple of different things. Up top, you've got an instantaneous gas module. So as you're driving, 
driving, this is going to jump around. And it just means if you kept driving at that speed in those conditions, you would probably get about that amount as far as gas mileage. Now, below that, you can see that I've got my, you know, how many miles are on this car, the last trip, and I can toggle through some different things up here with the button uh, if I want to look at, you know, range and, and fuel consumption stuff, right? And then down below that, you can see that I can get a temperature and I can tell that the car is full as it, it shows on the gauge below. So that's what all of your gauges are here. Now, moving across over onto the dash here, you've got a simple display as far as your setup goes, but let's talk about this. All right, guys, so let's talk about the display screen that you're going to see in this vehicle. So as you can see on the screen here, it's just a simple, I believe, five inch display screen. If you move up to that sport model, you're going to get that seven inch, which covers essentially all of this. And it'll be a touchscreen that includes Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and a few other features. So if you're more of a tech savvy person and you enjoy having that connection between your phone and the car, I would highly recommend that you consider uh, the sport model. But if you're just looking for a basic setup that's going to give you Bluetooth, a CD player, access to USBs to play music through, whether you want to store that music, uh, and be able to answer phone calls and do basic functions, this will absolutely work for you. So on the radio, I'll just point out that you have you know, your FM 1 and 2 and your AM. Uh, so you have the simple setups that you would expect out of the vehicle. On here, I can jump over to my USB. I can jump to Bluetooth if I want to listen you know, uh, wirelessly, uh, and then access to a CD because the car does have a CD player. Now, my volume controls are, of course, right here jumping between tracks or jumping to my favorite stations is going to be easy to access right there now as i move move across i've got my bluetooth controls as far as you know accessing this so if i want to connect up to phone just press yes hit okay and it'll search for your vehicle or search for your phone i should say now if i'm adding in a second third or fourth phone i can go to the menu down here and this is where i could go into settings and go to bluetooth so if i want to add a secondary device a third device so whether it be your spouse your friend you know or you're just hopping in one of your buddy's cars this is where you would do that so under the menu, the menu and then settings. So just be aware of that as you work through. You do have an equalizer, so you, you know you can affect you know treble, bass, uh, you know balance, all these different things as far as your audio goes. While we're talking about audio, you have a four, four speaker system in this vehicle, so just be aware of that. Not the most powerful, but it will get you uh, exactly what you want to do, which is just listen to your music and get down the road, or to be able to receive a phone call and hear the person talking to you. Now, under the menu, I'll just point out a couple other things in your settings here. You've got display adjustments, your rear camera uh, display change. The wallpaper, you can actually add a wallpaper through the USB. You could store an image and be able to access that image and be able to see it. Uh, so it gives you the ability to import it. You can see that that's grayed out because I don't have anything in the USB currently. My color theme, so if I wanted to change this maybe to red, I could absolutely do that and be able to continue. Of course, language. So if you're typically using a different language, feel free to change it there. And then your format, if you want this to be uh, your standard 12-hour clock or you want to go over that military time, you can take advantage of that too. So you know, several adjustments that you can make here on the screen. So before we leave the front end, I just want to talk about the shifter and then, of course, the backup camera. So on the shifter, of course, I can shift through all my gears and you'll see that it does have LEDs as I move through. Uh, and then secondarily, my parking brake is here. Just pull up to set it press down to release it. And when you pull up to set it, you will see that it gives you an indicator right there. Uh, so just want to let you know about that. And then brake hold is set up to where if I'm in stop and go traffic, uh, it'll hold the brake for me while the car's in drive. Uh, so this is good for like uh, bank teller lines, fast food lines, because what it does is it holds the brake while I'm in, in drive. So I can let my foot off of the, uh, the pedal so I don't have to keep it on without sliding forward. Just a reminder though, you do have to have your seatbelt on to use this function. So Related to that, I will point out underneath, you can see I have a USB down there. Sorry, this is uh, waving at you. Now, this is where things get a little bit wonky, but it kind of works. I have the USB. I actually have my phone plugged in, uh, and it does have a really skinny shelf that you can slide your phone into right there, which I do kind of like because uh, it keeps it nice and tucked away, uh, and that way I can still access it. So just know that your USB is down there. You'd have that pocket, and then you do have this additional space down here, and you can see that I've got an, also a power outlet down there. So it wraps all the way through. I've got the hole that comes through, so you can see my hand right here. Um, so they've given you storage space. It's just kind of weird to access and have your phone on. But I like that they've given you this skinny pocket right here to be able to store your phone while it's charging and still be able to access it while you're driving if you need to. Now, before we leave, I just want to point out the backup camera and show it to you. Right. So nice, clear display here. Uh, I can toggle between different views. So I've got a wide angle view, a standard backup view, uh, and then a view aimed straight down. So it's going to be about six inches from my bumper and then two and a half to three feet. Uh, so this is actually where my hatch opens up to, too. So I just want to point that out, this line. So when I'm opening the hatch, if I'm backing up to like my garage, I know that I need to leave that much clearance to make sure that I can open it up. So that way, if it was raining, I don't have to like walk out into the rain. I can kind of account for that. 
you can see that on all these views, right? So just so you have a general understanding of that uh, as far as how the backup camera works in this vehicle. All right, guys, so that's the review of this vehicle. So now I want to take you back and just quickly touch on all the comparisons and remind you about the 2022 that's coming out. So the first thing I want to do is exactly that, remind you about that 2022 that's coming out so you can expect a redesign in this vehicle. We're starting to see some of that land over in Europe. They're offering a hybrid model, which would be super cool if we could get here. But realistically, I think that we're going to see the two liter that you find in the current Civic land inside of the front of this vehicle and potentially that 1.5 liter turbo that we have living in some of the other four cylinders too. So I'll be excited to see that because it will give it additional horsepower, which I have seen the occasional uh, complaint about this vehicle is that they feel it's underpowered and that would really boost that up. Now let's talk about comparisons. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is up at the front of this vehicle since we're talking about engines, the horsepower comparison. So I'm gonna throw that up on the screen so that you can see how this car compares to all the other vehicles that kind of typically live in the market against it, right? After we've talked about horsepower, now I'm gonna talk about miles per gallon. So this car gets 28 in the city and 34 on the highway. Combined, it gets 30. So I want you to see what the competition looks like. So I'm gonna throw that up on the screen so that you can understand where this car lives as far as miles per gallon. Now, after we've done that, I'm gonna move to the front row. So we're just gonna work our way back here. I wanna talk about leg space up front. So I wanna throw that up on the screen so that you can understand how this car competes as far as that leg space that it's gonna give you and the other vehicles out there in the market. Now that we've done that in the front row, we're gonna move to the second row. Now, while we're talking about the second row, I wanna remind you that the second row does a lot of cool stuff that other vehicles aren't gonna necessarily do. One being that lounger chair setup that you saw, and two, that you can fold the seats not only uh, up, but all the way down. So you can you know, load a bicycle in the back, a TV, potted plants, whatever it may be, or you can throw them all the way down in case you're going camping and you wanna sleep in your car. So know that you have those. But moving past that, I just wanna talk about a leg space comparison in that second row. So I'm gonna throw that up on the screen so that you can understand where this car is coming from and how it competes in the market. Now, as we move to the very back of the vehicle, I want to do two comparisons like we did earlier. The first being cargo space with the second uh, row folded up, right? So people are sitting back, how much cargo space do I have and how does it compare to other vehicles out there in the market? Now, after we've looked at that comparison on the screen, I want to fold those back seats down and look at that full cargo space comparison. So I'll throw that up on the screen so that you can understand how this car competes with the other vehicles out there in the market. Now, lastly, I just want to say, as far as the vehicle goes, this is a fantastic vehicle. It's a small SUV. It's compact. It's great for those people that, hey, I still want to have that cargo space that I need, but I kind of want something that I can park in a parking garage, that I don't have to struggle to park in a parking lot when I'm out because I don't want a big bulky car, and I still want that good gas mileage that you can get out of a four-cylinder engine, right? So this makes sense for a lot of different people. I love that it sits a little bit higher off the ground than a, you know, a typical Civic or you know, a typical sedan. So if you got bad knees, you're older, and you're just looking for something you can get a little bit more lateral in, this is going to be a good pick for you. Now, if you wanted to go up to something a little bit bigger, I would recommend the CRV as far as laterally sliding it in and out of a car, but just be aware of that. Now, outside of those features, I will say that this comes at a great price point, but be aware there is a 2022 on the way. So if you're that person in search of the latest and greatest, maybe the 2021 is not the model for you. You might want to hold off for that 2022, but I couldn't guarantee an amount of time that you're going to be waiting. Now, as a overall vehicle, the LX offers quite a bit of features. However, I feel it lacks on the tech side. So for that reason, I would recommend that you jump up to the Sport model, which is about two grand more expensive. But related to that, I wanna show you a list of items that you're gonna get on the Sport. So I'm gonna throw that up on the screen and then a additional price that you would be adding on uh, to the vehicle. So know that if I wanna jump up to the Sport, it's gonna cost me this much additional, which I think is about two grand, but I am gonna get this list of items, right? So just be aware of that. I want you to see that on the screen so you can kinda understand, hey, should I get the LX or do I think it's worth the extra couple grand to jump up to that sport model? Now, with everything said, I have a couple favors to ask of you. One, I hope that you'll press that like button for me. It just makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside to know that somebody out there in the world is liking these videos and I'm making them for some sort of reason. Two, leave a comment. Did you love the video? Did you like it? Did you just kind of like it? Do you feel like I missed something? Hey, is there something else you would like to see a video on? Is there just one portion of something? Maybe it's Android Auto. Maybe it's Apple CarPlay. Maybe it's just a certain part of the car that you feel like I'm missing out on. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Or just let me know that I'm doing a good job because let's be honest, food and flattery will get you everywhere in the world. If you don't believe that, try it out. I bet it works. And then third, subscribe to the channel. Let me tell you about Hondas. Maybe you like my long-windedness. Maybe you like my bad jokes. Maybe you like the occasional dad joke. I'll throw one in there for you. Here, right now. Hey, what did the Buffalo say to his son when he left for college? Bye, son. On that note, let it go!